pandemic like the one we're experiencing today hasn't been seen in more than 100 years. WGN's Julie Unruh spoke with a Chicago woman who tells the story of the Spanish flu as told to her by her grandmother. My grandmother was born in 1915, and one of her earliest and most powerful memories was being diagnosed with the Spanish flu in 1918. And she could recall with eerie detail until she was 102 years old the feeling of isolation and fear of her being quarantined in her home and being sick with the Spanish flu. She would sit inside, isolated in her home, understanding that neighbors who left for work one morning never came home. 37-year-old Kara Goldman of Chicago shares the story of the white scarf tied to Eleanor Miller's front door back in 1918. Mrs. Miller was Goldman's grandmother, her hero and role model. As told to Goldman a hundred times before, Eleanor Miller was only three when she was diagnosed with the Spanish flu. Living on the north side of Chicago, the scarf tied to their front door, a symbol back then of homes hit hard by the virus that ultimately infected some 500 million people worldwide and killed between some 20 and 50 million others. She recalled this very vivid image of this white scarf and of these coffins passing by her window. And that really was one of her earliest memories in 1918. Through the years, Miller described the death wagons as she called them to her granddaughter time and time again. The scarf, Goldman explains, spoke to the sense of community back then and the fight they were all in together. It was not a scarlet letter, it was certainly a sign that someone was ill, um, but that that meant that ill person was trying to protect their neighbors. Neighbors were, um, were dying. It was a tremendously sad time, and at three years old, that shaped who she was. Eleanor Miller and her whole family survived the 1918 Spanish flu, and Goldman says it sparked a love for science in young Eleanor, who ultimately got a teaching certificate and later graduated from Northwestern University, where her father attended. This is her handwritten college application. She wanted to be a doctor, and she had told her father um, that she wanted to be a doctor and was told that girls don't take physics. And so um, she was told she could be a teacher. While she couldn't achieve her dream of being a doctor, she, this was clearly part of her DNA. Fast forward. Eleanor Ellisberg married Herman Miller in 1938. She was a biology teacher in the Chicago Public Schools, and later they had three children. Raised them in this house, one Mrs. Miller lived in for 72 years. Full of wisdom, laughter, and curiosity, she lived a long life filled with her favorite things, Lake Michigan, orchids, and beer. Most importantly, her family, four generations. She loved them all, her neighbors and good friends too, charming everyone with her warmth, her wisdom, and her laughter. Choices to isolate during the Spanish flu, Goldman believes the key to her survival and eternal gratitude for everything, even if Eleanor's dream of becoming a doctor never became a reality. From a very young age, I knew I wanted to be a doctor. In 2008, Kara Goldman graduated from med school. This photo taken on that day. Her grandmother and biggest fan there to witness it. A raw moment for them both. The most powerful moment of my life um, was my medical school graduation. Walking down the aisle and then outside and the whole thing, that was one of the highlights. That moment just summed it up. She was in the audience. She was in so many ways the, um, she represented the shoulders that I stood on to get to that point, that I could be a woman in medicine in an era when generations back, that wasn't an option. And I knew that I was living, um, that I was living her dream. We both understood mutually that I was where she had wanted to be and that I was there because of her. Dr. Kara Goldman finished her residency at Northwestern, is married and a mother herself. She's also a fertility and reproductive medicine specialist at Northwestern Medicine. Grandma Eleanor would tell us um, certainly that history repeats itself and we need to remember the past and think about the messages from the past, um, but not dwell on the past. She was 
the ultimate optimist. And um, she would encourage everyone to think with hope about the future um, and to do everything we need to do to keep each other safe, but also to be hopeful. Julie Unruh, WGN News. Eleanor Miller of Winnetka died in 2018, just shy of her 103rd birthday. She almost lived long enough to see two pandemics, but at least she got to see that graduation. Exactly.